This is part one, an intro to Panorama Video. We could thank Walt Disney for some of the first Panorama videos shown to the public. At Tomorrowland and Disneyland, you were able to watch America the Beautiful and Circa Rama. The first commercial Cinerama video made its debut and called This is Cinerama in 1952. Here in Hollywood, we have one of the three remaining Cinerama theaters. The requirement for theaters to have custom projection systems killed 360 video commercially. Panorama Video was also competing heavily against Anaglyph 3D movies, which were really popular in the 1950s. But by the 70s, Panorama Video and 3D were pretty much gone from the movie theaters. One of the worst 3D movies ever made was this one called The Mask. It is so bad, it's a cult classic. When the movie was released, I'm sure the only people who ever watched it were druggies on an LSD trip. But 3D made its comeback in 2009 with Avatar. And TV companies were pushing their 3D television sets. But as we know, the scarcity of 3D content, the high price of movie making tools, and the encumbered user experience, and 3D once again did not live up to its high expectations. Now 360 Panorama Video is also back. But is this just another fad? No one really knows, but I think 360 video is a little different than 3D. Just a few years ago, Panorama Videos was very task intensive. You had to have a camera array system, and companies like 360 Heroes made these arrays for your GoPro that allowed you to film from multiple GoPros so that you could stitch your video together as a panorama, so that you could play your video using a special dedicated app or a flash-based web browser. This is a great solution if you're a professional that can afford seven GoPros, a special 360 camera rig mount, video stitching software, and some dedicated playback tools, and you have about $4,000 in your pocket. With this type of investment, you could do some really cool things. You could not only get panorama video, but spherical video. That's 360 video with two 180 degree fields of view. This is a 360 Heroes 3D video rig that allows you to shoot video underwater. While these are all really great tools, I simply don't have $4,000 to spend on panorama video. So I'm really happy that Prosumer 360 Video has arrived. You can get started with 360 Video for less than $500. While this may be out of reach for the average consumer, $500 is affordable to semi-professionals or hobbyists. And of course, you cannot expect the high quality of a $4,000 system. You get an uncompromised solution at an affordable price. So what's changed recently is that it's more affordable. You don't need a dedicated app anymore to watch your 360 video. You don't need glasses like 3D. And the big news is that Panorama Video now plays directly on YouTube with the YouTube 360 player. This is built in right into your Chrome browser. And with these new 360 cameras, you have a multi-cam. You have multiple views of your film location using just one camera. Today, there are several good choices under the $500 price point. I have the VSN Mobile V360, the Kodak SP360, and the Ricoh Theta. You can see examples of my 360 footage on my YouTube channel. More 360 cameras are coming, so you'll have even more choices to choose from. Thanks for watching part one of my series on 360 video. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this.